Hi guys, this is my uh, part two to catch up with the backlog of movies I've been watching. Another four for your for your um, perusal and um, enjoyment. I hope you enjoy them and uh, yes, yeah, get straight to it. Another Japanese director, uh, Toshiaki Toyoda, um, film called Blue Spring from 2001. Uh, got the uh, a physical copy of this third window release. Not a lot of extras, but it's got an audio commentary by the director, so. I'll be checking that out at some point. I absolutely love Nine Souls. That was my introduction to this guy. And Blue Spring came pretty close. A beautifully nihilistic um, portrait of teenage society. It's a school where the teachers are there, but kind of not there. The parents are nowhere to be seen. And the school is run by different gangs. And it's all about the hierarchy of the gang culture and the... Um, just a kind of like um, pre prerequisite for the adult world in some ways. But the, the, the great thing about um, Toyota is that he just adds his own little flourishes and touches. I mean, he's had his second film, but the, the, punk, the punk rock soundtrack was in Nine Souls, also in this. And he manages to um, add a lot of charm and love into a very bleak, nihilistic type of film. And there's scenes where he, the young boys are tending flowers for example um which is just beautiful <laughs> and um and i think that uh, he uses cherry blossom as a backdrop to school which um so uh, the film looks gorgeous and he has some incredible crane shots um and he's and there i mean the film has got extreme violence in it and it can be very very bleak but underlying there's a lot of charm uh, reminding me a little bit of uh, Shion Sono, um, that mix of um, you know when you when you mix extremity with charm um, and love, it's, it's hard to explain how a director can do that. Um, but that's why I, I love these sort of films um, so much. Um, so I'm really looking forward to um, watching more of this guy's movies, and I, I think a lot of you would have seen. Um, Blue Spring to be fair but um, if you haven't then yeah check it out and there's some amazing um, camera shots in this film as well of your film of technical brilliance so you know so many reasons to watch this film another one uh, to recommend is one you may have seen back in the day in 1987 when it was first released um, David Leland's Wish You Were Here which is now currently streaming on Prime. Uh, Emily Lloyd's debut, um, a sad story of how she, well, she she did do a few films, but then I believe she um, suffered from mental health issues, but still one of the best British debut performances I can remember. And a film that has so much charm and love in it, I just can't even begin to express um, it's just so so charming and so it's 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 a film that is actually quite a, a difficult film in, in, in its subject matter about um, the coming of age of a, a young lady who has a very kind of interesting outlook to, to sex and relationships but it didn't date the film hasn't dated it's just like it's set in the, in the 50s in a seaside resort so you know it's just got a lot of love and care and attention has gone into the the mise-en-scene and um it just covers so much ground some great dramatic set pieces and just a film that i hadn't thought about for years i watched it in the cinema way back in 1987 i was part of a film some film club and we did like a little study on it and i remember really loving it and then to watch it again and those memories kind of flooding back was just wonderful so um yeah if you haven't seen wish you were here and please do yeah so it's not every day that you discover a film that um made by a, a latvian director who, uh, who well he directed it he wrote it he scored it he, he drew it um it's an animated film uh, from 2019 called away it took the guy three and a half years to because um conceive and to to produce and he made the, the story up as he went along which 
kind of shows a little, a little bit. It's a bit meandering and it's hard to follow. The animation style is a cross between Minecraft and Ghibli. It is a film that I think that deserves to be noticed and respected. It's maybe a case of style style over substance, but I really liked it. I, I thought it was um, it's relative, relatively simple. Um, lots of al allegorical stuff going on um, as well. And, um, and at times the animation is absolutely breathtaking. So yeah, I mean, it's, it was going like for a fiver to buy on iTunes and um, a friend of mine recommended it. So I thought I'd give it a go. Uh, watched it with my mum actually and my wife and they weren't quite so impressed, but um, yeah, held their attention and uh, probably not a film that kids would enjoy, but if you like um, animation and you're of the, of a certain age then and you can appreciate you know the care and the love that went into making this film then i think it'll be for you so my second oliver assayas film during the past few weeks is a film called summer hours uh 2008 i watched it on the the criterion channel as i often do as a kind of try before you buy um and yeah i'm definitely going to buy this one um when i can when i can pick it up for a good price this film um Wow, it's just like heartbreaking and had me in bits um, two or three times. And then when I regurgitated the story and the, the, the little mini review to my wife, I started crying. So I was like, oh, for goodness sake, come on, get a grip, guy. But yeah, I'm not going to say too much about it, actually, because I'll, it is kind of a film that does have um, a, a kind of a reveal early on I don't want to spoil too much but it, it's a film about how families kind of um, grow apart and also how families deal with confrontation some families deal with it in a very abrasive and confrontational way some families use diplomacy and love and I was really really impressed the way that um, the film discovers this and shows you this and it's just a really beautiful piece of art uh, or beautiful piece of piece of work it's a really gorgeous film um, and there were lots and lots of things that I could identify with <clears throat> when I was watching it even though the film is about a, a rich French family um, <laughs> it's like you start off thinking you start off not really identifying but the teenage party in the in the film was just beautiful um, the performances are really touching. And like I said, lots of understatement here. It's one of those films that when you review, you start to sort of kind of pontificate and meander because it is a really, it's just a very emotional experience when I, when I saw this film. Uh, real skillful, skillful piece of work by the, by the director. Um, absolutely um, loved it. So yeah, would definitely recommend Summer Hours if you can catch that, catch that as well. Okay, so that's the end of my back-to-back um, -back videos. Hope you enjoyed that selection. I'm going to try really hard to keep it to uh, one video a week so I could do four films a week. Back to the usual routine. Um, as ever, always interested in your thoughts and comments about any films that you want to recommend to me or any comments on the films that I've seen and what you think. So it's um, just so great to uh, to have um, conversations with you guys. So yeah, take take care and I hope to see you soon.